Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is part 6 of the 110's pre-MOT and winter prep which you will be happy to know is the final part. I'll be wrapping up this whole project in this video now and I'm very excited to share that with you and I hope that you enjoy. Yep, so you can see the shock tower there and just how old it is and corroded it is. I mean, it's quite common, unfortunately. They collect a lot of that salty water up in those shock towers. So again, it's a common problem. There I am just taking the bottom spring plates off. And you can see the spring hangers there as well, which again, not in bad condition, just a bit of surface rust. But further into the video, I'll get more into how I prepped and painted them. You'll, you'll soon see what I did there. Moving on to taking the front radius arms or C-spanners, whatever you'd like to call them, just whipping those off now. So whilst I have access to them, I'm just whipping these radius arms because these bushes do need replacing. So I'm just whipping those off while I've got easy access to them because I don't really want to do it further down the line. It's just a lot more convenient for me now. That's just the amount of pressure that was roughly needed to push the old bushes out. So you've probably seen this press before if you've watched my other videos, but I'm just pressing those old bushes out now just with a socket and just push that right the way through. I used a hacksaw blade to make like a relief cut and then just my modified chisel just to bash out the remaining sleeve of the bush. And there you go, that's how they come out. So now just pushing in the new bushes with a little bit of copper grease on there. As you can see, they slide in quite nicely with the press. This isn't the best job in the world, but I've just cleaned the area up using a wire wheel on my angle grinder. But the MOT was very quickly approaching and I just needed to fly the vehicle back together pretty much so the front end it didn't really need that much tlc it was mainly like the rear of the vehicle anyway so all i did was just quickly clean up the front as best i can for now because again i only want this to last maybe two or three years more so here i am just installing the new bolts on the radius arms with a little bit of copper grease so i applied the corollas rust inhibiting primer so the primer was put on the night before and then i i'm just got a shot here of me putting on the gloss black top coat the reinforced top coat here are the brand new bug shocks or dampers whatever you'd like to call them and the shock towers which are galvanized and painted with that corolla cess primer and the glass reinforced gloss black top coat these are brand new galvanized spring seats and a new galvanized ring which i didn't bother to paint i just didn't really see any need again just using the spring clamps they just compress the spring a little bit just to make installing them so much easier and for anybody that might be wondering, the calipers on the front are pretty much brand new, along with the discs and pads and things like that. I did all of this before all of this works, so unfortunately I haven't got any footage of that. I just thought it was quite a good thing to renew all parts in this area, you know, just whilst I were here. So the 110 essentially has brand new calipers all around and things like that. Brand new front springs. I just kind of thought for the price of the springs, it were worth just putting some new ones in. So this is the new and the old track rod bar side by side. So I've got the new track rod end basically centre to centre as the old one because I did intend to get the tracking done properly but just for now I wanted it to be roughly correct. But at this point I just wanted to get the centres as close to the original as possible just so the tracking was more or less correct at this point. Anyway, here I am installing that now and just clicking it up. Every nut and bolt was torqued up to the values of the workshop manual. Putting through the split pin now. So 
So once all that was installed, I talked everything up apart from suspension components. I put the wheels on, then lowered it down and talked them up. And I talked up the rest of the components like suspension components as per the workshop manual. On to finishing off some interior bodywork now. These are bits for the upstand inside where the seats bracket to and those corner pieces. I'm giving these a little bit of a key up with a palm sander. It was kind of unnecessary because the metal etching primer does that but I just thought I'd give them a little helping hand if you like. And this is just an etching primer which is similar to tea wash. So I believe it has some kind of acid base but this primes the metal as well because if you don't do this step the paint won't adhere to it properly so it's a, it's quite a necessary step. So everything was etched prime first with that before I went on to painting with some Epsom green. This is just the first coat now. And again, I did try and do a reasonable job, but you won't really see these parts, to be honest with you, like pretty much they will be covered by carpet. The colour is absolutely stunning, I think. It's one of my favourite Land Rover colours. It's just such a nice pearlescent colour. So anyway, I sprayed both sides of them, but I'm not too worried about any little defects in the paint or anything like that. And just while those pieces were drying, I thought I'd just take the opportunity to spray that rear cross member. I masked everything off with like newspaper. I shoved a load of newspaper in the rear cross member because I painted all the inside by hand like I did with the chassis. And I chose to spray the rear cross member because I wanted quite a good appearance on it. Because this is the bit that you are going to see. You're not going to see the chassis as much. So here I am just again attacking it with the palm sander because I did put a little bit of Corolla Cess primer on there. Just so you know to stop any surface rust coming through. So I'm just keying it back down now. So I'd like to point out at this point the clips are going to get quite haphazard because the MOT was really quickly approaching and I was working in the dark and the rain and things like that so the clips are a little bit neither here nor there so I do apologise, I'm not going to keep going on though but that is why they're in different locations and stuff doesn't really tie together as nicely. Um, I popped up and down from different locations because the driveway up here, for example, I can just work around the car. I'm not having to work like in the middle of the street, which isn't good for anybody. So that's why I'm back up here now to install the seats and other bits like that. So here I am ready to install the parts that I was spraying up in Epsom Green earlier. So I'm going to recover up that seat box cross member and just replacing all of the bits that, you know, needed it in there with the aluminium bodywork. I got the different kits to install the body panels and things like that and the body panels from YRM. So these are special rubberized gaskets that I'm putting in now. So these aim to break the electrical connection between the two metals just so they don't galvanically corrode together. So that's the aluminium and steel. So that is why all these parts do turn to powder because the steel attacks the aluminium so I'm putting in gaskets now to hopefully either stop or slow that process down again. So here I am just putting in some stainless steel rivets from YRM. Again, kits are all from there. Just riveting that in and I found this such a satisfying task. And it's not the neatest of jobs because I had to drill out like the old ones and things like that. So don't mind the mess, but I, I genuinely enjoyed doing this. But yeah, I'm just doing this work, you know, so it'll see for a couple more years. I don't think it's going to be perfect. And to be honest with you, I'm probably going to replace these parts again in the future anyway. So that's why I'm doing a good job to my ability, I think. But I'm not doing the most perfect job with these panels because some of them are going to have to be replaced. So here's where we are now. I've got the front end to reassemble and I've just gone over those two front dumb irons that I welded up in a previous video just with the Corolla Cess primer and the glass reinforced top coat like I've done with everything. And he looks quite sad without his face so I was very glad to you know sort of reassemble him and send him on his way to MOT. Here I am putting the brackets back in for the seats and you can see how that all fits together now. That upstand with the corner pieces on, you can see how that's assembled. 
all fixed in place and ready to go. You can't really get the alignment wrong either because that follows the seat box cross member. I bent these brackets up to get the old side pieces out and pop the new ones in. So once these brackets are popped down, um, I just drilled straight through, which you can see me doing here. I got all the alignment and panels in place before drilling any bits like this. I'm just popping some stainless steel bolts through that and a gasket in there as well to again help that galvanic corrosion. So I had to use some tech screws in some of these as well because I couldn't get the riveter in there. And I do need to get a different riveter so I can replace these because it is not the most ideal situation at all but I was against the clock. And anyway, there's all the seats in now. I didn't capture the part on film because it took a few of us to manhandle the seats back in and it was pitch black to be honest with you so I don't even think you'd have been able to see anything anyway but it wasn't the most pleasant experience. It's actually quite strange to see it back with all its seats in again at this point. And here's the back end with the lashing eyes back on. Everything back in place with the painted tank, tank guard, things like that. And brand new stainless steel bolts everywhere where applicable, apart from on those lashing eyes, just because it wasn't really applicable to use them there. Just with reservations about strength issues. I'm back at my house now doing last little bits of touch-ups. And just to bolt the last bits on the Land Rover, So the touch-ups and installing of parts, which included these rear valence panels, just riveted those back in. Need a little bit of a clean up on one of those rivets there. And that's it, working in the rain until the last. And there were a couple of little bits outstanding, like putting the carpets back in and round there, but. And voila, its face is back on, which is brilliant. Kind of looked a little bit strange with all its face back on at first. And there's the brand new galvanized bumper that's painted with the Corollas products with stainless steel fixings, the valence panels are on. So this is the morning of the MOT, all finally done and running and of course it was raining but it's so good to have him back running again and ready to go off for his MOT. There's all the new parts there and you might notice I forgot to take a little bit of masking out there but it's not the worst thing in the world to happen. This is probably the last time it'll look so shiny and new. Quite a proud moment really on the morning of the MOT, just seeing him all fired up and ready to go. Just made everything the past few months so much more worth it just seeing him back together. So yeah, just one last look at all the hard work that's gone into this vehicle over the past few months. And it'll be quite interesting to see how long it'll actually last in this condition as well. So anyway, after it passed the MOT, I now took the opportunity to further underseal and make sure that the undercarriage was protected. Just checking it out really because a family member actually came forward with a lift after the MOT and after this whole ordeal. But anyway, I was very grateful for it and the opportunity to use it. So that's why it's up on the lift, just observing pretty much the last few months of work. So this is one of the next steps that I didn't have chance to do before the MOT because it flew to the MOT date. So this is one of the things that I wanted to do pretty sharpish after the MOT. So I'm just injecting the Corollas Rust Inhibiting Wax Cavity Wax now. And that cavity wax just goes on the inside of those box sections. So this is a gun that I used. You can pick up an underseal gun from pretty much anywhere. I got mine in my local auto parts shop but they come with different tips, or some of them do, um, that just spray in different directions and just help you get full coverage on the inside of those box sections. 
and then I just use the gun which is attached to the compressor just to shove those nozzles down and let the cavity wax just creep into every little space there is in those chassis rails and it is meant to have excellent creep properties. Whilst I had use of the car lift, I also went back over the chassis and just gave an extra layer of that Corollas S primer, that buff color that you can probably see. I just went over and gave the chassis a little bit of a dusting in any places that may have looked a little bit sparse or I may have accidentally chipped a little bit of paint off. I just went back over with the Corollas S primer and the glass reinforced top coat just to ensure that every bit of the chassis was covered to the best of my ability. So anyway, here I am injecting the wax into all those areas. Here I am just using the angled nozzle just to angle it sort of up and around the box section. And then I'll use one that sprays in all directions to push into the chassis rail and drag it back towards myself so that it gives a nice even coat along each surface in there. The angled one just allows you to almost concentrate the wax in certain areas, whereas the other one gives um, a multi-directional spray of the whole box section. I just kind of got in there and pretty much angled it at where I thought would need sort of extra protection or where the multi-directional one may miss or not give us fuller coverage on. And I'm sure you guys know, but it's actually the inside of the chassis that will corrode the most because that's where it'll gather the water and the salty water and mud and other bits of grime where it'll just rot out from the inside so condensation things like that will just eat it from the inside out so it didn't really matter how much of a good job i did on the outside it's what's on the inside as well that probably arguably count the most so this is the first trip out to the seaside just to give him a good run out of after the past couple of months and to celebrate passing the mot and all the hard work that has gone into him just getting him back on the road and moving again so i'm not going to waffle on anymore i really hope you've enjoyed this little series that i've done and i'll see you again in the next video